How's it going, people? God, I just tried to do this video and completely got tongue-tied. It's been that kind of day. It's an old uh, favorite uh, movie and soundtrack. I I got it on Amazon and I looked at it. And I think it's actually a bootleg because I've never been able to find this, but it's so nice I didn't complain. <laughs> Sorry, guys, you know. Put it on the market and I'll buy it. Great soundtrack. Almost impossible to find. <sighs> All right. Uh, chapter 28 and 29 are both kind of short. I'm thinking about blasting to them, both of them. Oh, and I'm drinking... Uh, Highly recommend it. I've bought it. I bought this three or four times now. I like it a lot. It's not just funny. It's damn good beer. Ale, excuse me. Grail ale. <coughs> Holy Grail ale. Let's see. Chapter twenty-eight. <sighs> Lamanites make war upon. Nephites. Uh, a tremendous battle. Lamanites defeated. Deep mourning. Is that like deep hurting, you know? <laughs> One. And now, it came to pass. Ugh. <sighs> that after the people of Ammon were established in the land of Jershom, and a church also established in the land of Jershom, and the armies of the Nephites were set round the land of Jershom, yea, and in all the borders round about the land of Zarahemla. Behold, the armies of the Lamanites had followed their brethren into the wilderness. Two. And thus, there was a tremendous battle, yea, even such as an one, and one, as never had been known among all the people in the land from the time Lehi left Jerusalem, yea, and tens of thousands of the Lamanites were slain and scattered abroad. Three, yea, and also there was a tremendous slaughter among the people of Nephi. Nevertheless, the Lamanites were driven and scattered and the people of Nephi returned again to their land. Uh, how many did they lose? I don't see it mentioned. Oh well. Maybe they'll, they'll give us the Nephi head count, which should be easier. Huh. Four. And now, this was a time that there was a great mourning and lamentation heard throughout all the land among all the people of Nephi. Is it mourning and lamentations kind of the same thing? Another oxymormon, perhaps? Five. Uh, yea, the cry of the widows mourning for their husbands, and also of fathers mourning for their sons, and the daughters for the brother, yea, the brother for the father. And thus the cry of mourning was heard among all of them, Mourning for their kindred, 
who had been slain. God, Shakespeare's spinning in his fucking grave right now. Or at least William Tyndall is. <laughs> in his ashes. His ashes are spinning. That's right, they burned his ass. Uh, <laughs> six! And now, surely, this was a sorrowful day. Yay! A time of solemnity. And a time of much fasting and prayer. Seven. And thus endeth the fifteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Did you want my whistle? Eight. And this is the account of, of Ammon and his brethren, their journeyings in the land of Nephi, and their sufferings in the land, their sorrows and their afflictions, and their uncomprehensible joy. And the reception and safety of the brethren in the land of Jershom. And now, may the Lord, the Redeemer of all men, bless their souls forever. Nine. And this is the account of the wars and contentions among the Nephites. And also the wars between the Nephites and the Lamanites. Oh, got an asterisk. B.C. 76. And they sound sure of themselves this time. B.C. 76. <laughs> That's not before Columbus. It's before Christ. Before the Common Era. Uh. And the 15th year of the reign of the judges is ended. 10. And from the first year to the 15th year has brought to pass the destruction... Hang on. I'll drink to that. Probably a bad idea. <sighs> oh, yeah, it's a bad idea. Uh, brought to pass the destruction of many thousand lives. Yea, it has brought to pass an awful scene of bloodshed and inebriation. All right. I'll stick to beer after this. Oops, that's a fossil lid. Ah. Ooh, tasty. Eleven. And the bodies of many thousands are laying low in the earth while the bodies of many thousands are moldering in heaps upon the face of the earth, yea, and many thousands are mourning for the loss of their kindred, as they said in a long drawn out uh, <laughs> verse 5. <laughs> uh, hillbilly poetry, that's what it is. Hillbilly Shakespeare. All right. Because they had reason to fear, according to the promise of the Lord, that they are consigned to a state of endless woe. Twelve. While many thousands of others truly mourn for the loss of their kindred, yet they rejoice and exalt in the hope, and even now, according to the promises of the Lord, that they are raised to dwell at the right hand of God in a state of 
never-ending happiness. Thirteen. And thus we see how great the iniquity of man is because of sin and transgression, and the power of the devil which comes by the cunning plans which he hath devised to ensnare the hearts of men. Fourteen. And thus we see the great call of diligence of men to labor in the vineyards of the Lord, and thus we see the great reason of sorrow and also of rejoicing. Sorrow because of the death and destruction among men, and joy because of the light of Christ unto life. And that's it for 28. Go ahead and just read 29 real quick. Start with the master. Alma's yearning desire to cry repentance to all. God's word apportioned in wisdom. Alma rejoices over success of his brethren. One. Oh, that I were an angel and could have the wish of mine heart that I might go forth and speak with the trump of God with a voice to shake the earth and cry repentance unto every people. Two, yea, I would declare unto every soul as with the voice of thunder repentance and the plan of redemption that there should that they should repent and come unto our God, that they might not be more sorrow upon all the face, that there might not be more sorrow upon all the face of the earth. No more drinks, I just gotta finish that. Three, and behold, I am a man and do sin in my wish. Yeah, you prideful little prick. <laughs> For I ought to be content with the things which the Lord hath allotted unto me. For I ought not to harrow up in my desire in my desires. <laughs> the firm decree of a just God. For I know that he granteth unto men according to their desire, whether it be unto death or unto life. Yea, I know that he allotteth unto men according to their wills, whether they be unto salvation or unto destruction. Not yet. Five. <sighs> Yea, and I know that good and evil have come before all men. He that knoweth not good from evil is blameless. Well, then thanks for fucking telling us, dickhead. We would have been fine if you hadn't told us. We could have just got baptized after we're dead. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to my post-mortem baptism. <laughs> just kidding, you know. Not about this. Uh, yeah, blameless. But he that knoweth good and evil 
to him it is given according to his desires, whether he desireth good or evil, life or death, joy or remorse of conscience. 6. Now, seeing that I know these things, why should I desire more than to perform the work to which I have been called? 7. Why should I desire that I were an angel? That I could speak unto all the ends of the earth? 8. For behold, the Lord doth grant unto all nations of their own nation and tongue to teach his word, yea, in wisdom, all that he seeth fit that they should have. Therefore we see that the Lord doth counsel in wisdom according to that which is just and true. So Joseph Smith wishes he was an angel. So he imagined a guy named Moroni. Oh, I'm sorry, we're talking about uh, 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 Ammon, excuse me. Or is it Alma? I forgot who's talking. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, nine. I know that which the Lord hath commanded me, and I glory in it. I do not glory in myself, but I glory in that which the Lord hath commanded me. Yea, and this is my glory, that perhaps I may be an instrument in the hands of God to bring some soul to repentance, and this is my joy. 10. And behold, when I see many of my brethren too, truly uh, penitent and coming to the Lord their God, then is my soul filled with joy. Uh, then do I remember that the Lord <clears throat> has done for me what the Lord has done for me. Yea, even that he hath heard my prayer. Yea, then do I remember his merciful arm, which he extended towards me. Eleven. Yea, and I also remember the captivity of my fathers, for I surely do know that the Lord did deliver them out of bondage, and by this did establish his church. Yea, the Lord God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, did deliver them out of bondage. Twelve. He's anybody's God. That's great. Tw uh, twelve. Yay! I have always remembered the captivity of my fathers, and that same God who delivered them out of the hands of the Egyptians did deliver them out of bondage. Although they seem to be into it. Thirteen. Just for, just because I had to finish that. Yay! And that same God did establish His church among them. Yay! And that same God hath called me by a holy calling to preach the word unto this people and hath given me much success in the which my joy is full. 14. But I do not joy in my own success alone. 
But my joy is more full because of the success of my brethren. <laughs> Who have been up in the land, up to the land of Nephi. Fifteen. Yeah, they brought invasions back. Thanks. Thousands, tens of thousands dead, but thanks, guys. Fifteen. Behold, they have labored exceedingly and have brought forth much fruit. And how great shall be their reward. They're just miners for a heart of gold. But they're growing old. Sixteen. Now, when I think of the success of these, my brethren, my soul is carried away, even to the separation of it to, from the body. <clears throat> so we're talking astral projection now. Or lucid dreaming, Biatch. As it were, so great is my joy. Ever heard of sleep paralysis, old hag? I've had that. It's trippy. It was scary as shit, but I kind of miss it. It was kind of like dying, but not really. It's weird. I mean, I totally know what that shit's like. I think I have, like, minor epilepsy or something. I could be a prophet, you know? Uh, 17. We're almost there. And now, may God grant unto these my brethren that they may sit down in the kingdom of God. Yay! And also, all those who are the fruit of their labors. Somehow that makes me think of, like, you know, underwear. <laughs> you know, they're, they're doing their job holding shit up, you know? <laughs> holding, holding up the, uh... Where am I going with this? <sighs> fruit of their labors, that they may go no more out, but that they may praise him forever. Sounds fun. Sounds like a fucking ball. Uh, forever. Fuck you, forever. <laughs> That's a bunch of shit. Unfortunately, I kind of like this forever idea. Me forever. That's awesome. It can happen. Sorry. Very sorry. Uh, and may God grant that it may be done according to my words, even as I have spoken. Amen. And that's it for uh, 28 and 29. Because I really want to fucking finish this book, and I don't care if anybody's watching. Actually, I do, but... It's okay if they don't. <laughs> That's what I mean. I, I'm okay if they don't. Thanks if you do. Peace. The fuck. Out. You have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having. And we're going to finish this book. I hope somebody, some folks will stick with me. Because I'm going to finish anyway. Bye.